Now then folks, how are you doing? It's James JT at the Movies and I'm back with you for day 5 of my 30 day movie challenge. Uh, and as you can probably tell, I'm out and about. So, um, I've got a lot on um, today. I've been at work and uh, then I'm out this evening. I'm picking up a guitar that's been repaired and then going to my friend's first jam night that he's hosting. So I'm going to go and support him. Uh, but I managed to watch uh, my film today in, in two halves. Uh, I watched the first half of it through my lunch break. And then the, the second half of it I watched after work while I'm waiting for my sister who's kindly giving me a lift home. Um, so I'm going to go meet her in a, in a couple of minutes when she finishes work. But I thought I'll just shoot the quick vlog now. So the film that I picked was a film entry from actually a series of films. And I could have picked any any one of these from the, from the series. But I picked this one for, for two reasons. Um, one, because I've not seen it in the longest time. And, um, and two, because it was actually readily available to stream for free here on YouTube. And if anybody's interested in watching it, I'll include the, the link to watch it in the description of this video. But it was Bullet to Beijing, which is the fourth entry in the Harry Palmer spy movie series. And this series started as a, a series that would sort of run in in competition almost with James Bond in the 1960s and the, the first one, The Ipcris File, was even uh, sort of produced by the, the same production company and there's a lot of people that sort of carry over between the two but this one was a really interesting concept for me uh, and ever since I've been a young lad I've right enjoyed it. It, uh, it picks up with Harry some 25-30 uh, years after the events of The Ipcris File and Billion Dollar Brain and Funeral in Berlin at the end of his career with the British Secret Service and he's rather unceremoniously let go at the start of this film after there's been a been a change in the leadership of the the British Secret Service and they no longer feel that he's useful um, and he ends up getting recruited to um, to basically do some uh, sort of couriering work over in uh, in Russia uh, by a chap called Alex who's a very powerful man played in this by Michael Gambon um, and as, as he accepts the job because he needs the money and he needs something to do with his time he soon starts to learn that there's a lot more going on and that maybe Alex isn't all that he seems and you know how are all these sort of former friends and foes that he's meeting along the way intertwined in this uh, in this plot and it's um it's it's a TV movie, so it doesn't really have the production quality um, of the original three films in the series, or you know, um, you know, even even like I say, you know, some of the some of the James Bond movies that it was it was definitely made to sort of uh, compete with and sort of occupy a similar sort of space. But it certainly has its charm, and I would say the majority of that charm comes from uh, comes from Michael Caine. Uh, reprising the role as Harry Palmer and I think that for me is the best thing about this film um, definitely I mean can you I, I like to imagine can you imagine if, if Connery had played Bond for all that time or if he'd have you know I know he did never say never in the early 80s but if he'd have come back and done a film as old man Bond essentially in the 90s and that's kind of what we're getting here with this film with Michael Caine the plot's like I say relatively by the numbers and the supporting cast are uh, they're fun uh, You've got Jason Connery in there, which I mean we've talked about Bond. He's Sean Connery's son, which is great. There's Mia Sara in there. Uh, folks will know her from uh, from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And there's even a, a cameo from Burt Kwok from the the Pink Panther films, and also had some uh, some minor roles in the early Bond films as well. I enjoyed it, and I do think it's underrated. I think this series on the whole is very underrated. Uh, so I would recommend checking them all out. So yeah, folks, if you're interested in watching Bullet to Beijing, I'll leave a, a link to the stream that I watched down below, as I said earlier. Leave me your thoughts on this video and your thoughts on the, the film, if you've seen it, or the Harry Palmer series in general. I'd love to know. Drop the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And if you're meeting me for the first time in this video, hello, nice to meet you. Please think about subscribing to the channel. I promise I normally do videos at home in my movie room and not against a fence in Leeds um, but uh, I've got to shoot where the opportunities present themselves today but please think about subscribing to the channel it would uh, it would mean the world to me and of course it'd help the channel to grow as well above all else folks take care of yourselves and I'll see you again for day six of my challenge bye for now